in the material things of this world, stuff that's going to be gone before you know it, when we ought to be investing in the spiritual things, the things of God, because those are the things that are going to last forever. You see, a true Christian has this deep, heartfelt desire, I want to do what God put me here to do. And and that attitude, I think, is reflected in the words of that hymn that we sing sometime, Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. There ought to be a desire in your heart to do God's will. Now, the other side of that coin is if you go through life and you don't even have any interest in what God wants you to do, if there's a total disregard in your life for the things of God, then you know what's at the root of that? The ugly sin of pride. And folks, that ugly sin of pride is the root of all those things that James has been talking about up to this point. He's been talking about conflict and worldliness and slander and things such as that. And pride is at the root of all of that. And let me tell you something, for you to go through life and disregard what God wants you to do, that's just like you standing and shaking your face in the fist of Almighty God and saying, God, I am the sovereign ruler of my life. I can run it. Let me ask you, is that describing you? And if you look at your life today and you are the sovereign ruler of your life, Let me ask you something. How's that working out for you? And I want to ask you something else. You rather be running your life or you rather the God that created everything there is run your life? Who do you think do a better job running your life? You or God? You ought to be thinking about those things as we make our way through this passage this morning. All right, now as we get into these verses... First thing that old James points out here is self-sufficiency. And I want you to look at your own life, and I want you to to ask yourself, is there any of this in my own life? Look at verses 13 and 14 of our text. James 4, 13 and 14. He says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Now, you know, James, one of the things you notice about him as you read through this book and study about this book, he's real good at painting pictures out of words, isn't he? Have you noticed how many times James uses illustrations to to get across some kind of a truth that, that he's trying to present? Now, in this passage of Scripture here today, you've got to kind of get your mind in in an oriental setting. And and you've got to understand, he right here is probably talking about a Jewish merchant. This guy, uh, James, is talking about he had on his long flowing robe and he had on his sandals and his camels are standing outside loaded and ready to roll because this man is getting ready to go on another business trip. But what we need to do this morning is we need to take that and we need to pull it in our imagination out of the Oriental setting and we need to bring it over into modern-day America. And in modern-day America, what James is describing here might very well be a businessman somewhere at corporate headquarters. This guy's got on his Rolex watch. He's got on his $2,000 suit. He's sitting in an office with lush carpet on the floor. There are cell phones going off in offices all around him. And popping up on computer screens all around that conference table are business charts of all kind. Maybe they're getting the corporate jet ready to take off because this guy's fixing to head off on his next business trip. Now, as James describes this guy, he tells us this guy's really pretty self-sufficient. He, he's looking at himself. For one thing right here, there's no thought with this guy about what God wants 
for him to do. And certainly there's not any thought about how unpredictable life is. I want you to notice he says today or tomorrow. He, he's saying, you know what, we're, we're going to get on that jet tonight, later tonight. And if that doesn't work out, something comes up, we'll get on it first thing in the morning. He's self-sufficient because, you see, he just assumes that tomorrow is going to be just exactly like today. And you know what the Bible says about that? Proverbs 27, 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow. For you do not know what a day may bring forth. Folks, wouldn't you agree with that? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Matter of fact, you don't even know if there's going to be a tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring forth. You, you know, you, you sit here today and you look healthy and you appear to be feeling pretty good, but you have no idea what one day might bring. Let me ask you, do you operate on the same philosophy this guy does that James is talking about here? He says, today or tomorrow, we'll go to such and such city. You notice he's even presumptuous. He's pretty self-sufficient about where he's going. See, the, the city that he's talking about, it's, already been, it's a done deal. That, that city's already been so selected. You know, it, it seems like all the demographics line up, and the company that this guy works for, or the one he owns, or whatever, that company has decided this is exactly where we're going to go, to such and such city. Now, all the projections that they look at, they seem to indicate that that's going to be the next uh, boom city. There's every indication that times of prosperity are coming there. Maybe even the city government in this particular city is making concessions toward businesses that will come in there and, and, and do business. And, and this guy, he's self-sufficient about all that. He, he's not looking at God. He's just looking at economic indicators. And then I want you to notice he's even cocky about what he's going to do when he gets there. He says, I'm going to spend a year there and buy and sell and make a profit. See, what he's saying, he's saying a year is all it's going to take. I mean... All we've got to do is go in there for one year and put our time and put our resources in there. And in one year's time, we're going to be in the black. We're going to be making a profit. See, he's confident about what's going to happen in a year when he can't even, just like we talked about a while ago, he don't even know what's going to happen in a day. We're going to buy and sell and make a profit. Can't miss out on this deal. Can't go wrong on this. You ever had anybody give you a deal like that, present a deal like that to you? I mean, you get in on this deal, you're going to triple your money. You, you're not going to lose. And somebody starts talking to you like that, and your eyes start getting wide, and dollar signs start getting in your eyes, and, and you're interested in that kind of a deal. But this guy here, he never considers that instead of a boom, there might be a bust. He never considers that instead of uh, good times, there might be recession. Y'all notice we hear that all the time now, those economic terms like recession and depression and all that. Y'all, have y'all noticed that? We, we hear them every day. You know what the difference is between recession and depression? Recession is when your neighbor loses his job. Depression is when you lose your job. But this guy right here, he's self-sufficient. As a matter of fact, if you look down there in verse 13, it's interesting that the tense of that Greek verb there that's translated say, that means that this guy habitually lives his life without any regard for God. As a matter of fact, the verb that is used there means to say something that's based on logic or it's based on reason. And so what James is doing here is he is rebuking people that think things through and they articulate what they're going to do without giving any God, God any part in the matter. And they do that habitually, 
and consistent.